morning of September 11th, the whole world changed. It was a day that changed the world as we knew it. 20 years on, much media attention is focusing on how Americans, as well as the rest of the world, are commemorating the tragedy of 9-11. The art world is no exception. Over the years, artists and filmmakers like Oliver Stone, Michael Moore, and most recently Spike Lee have unleashed their creative impulses in a number of forms to evoke memory, emotion and hope. The Deauville American Film Festival is underway in Normandy, and we asked some of the talent on the red carpet how they remember 9-11. It was a horrible day, it was a tragic day, and it, above all, I think the repercussions of that day are, were more tragic, because you know what happened in Afghanistan and in Iraq, but above all, our civil liberties in the country were curtailed in America. If you look at any film in America, major or independent, that came out after September 11th, you know, any brown person is a bad guy. And uh, hopefully, and, and I believe, that the majority of Americans don't feel that way anymore, that uh, we consider ourselves more world people rather than just isolationists. I was in fourth grade, I believe, and my dad was actually flying to New York that day. That's why I vividly remember it. Um, obviously, he was not on one of those planes. I think our teacher sat us down and was like, we're going to have a moment of silence. This just happened. And it was, you know, I, I don't even think devastating, really. I think the shock of it was more than anything, especially as a young kid. It's a tragic, tragic day. From photographs taken when the Twin Towers fell to artworks forged out of World Trade Center debris, Artists around the world use their passion as a way to reflect, cope and heal. The Pulitzer Prize winner David Turnley was one of the few photographers who recorded the Twin Towers fall right in front of him. Hello. Hi. Thank you for being here with us now. Thanks for having me. David, take us back to that day 20 years ago. Yeah, I was in the shower. It was about 8.45 and uh, I lived just several blocks north in the West Village and uh, I heard what sounded like I thought a train stopping the way wagons sound when they stop. And it was an unusual sound, I'd never heard that before. And it was quite overwhelming and, and then I had an appointment. And I'd really moved to New York in the late 90s to get away from war, to be honest. I'd been covering war all over the world. And uh, when I got down on the street, on the sidewalk to go to an appointment, um, I obviously saw that the first plane had hit the first tower went back, got my camera's film, and by the time I hit the, the sidewalk the second time, the second plane had hit. And then we knew, of course, that it wasn't just an accident. So I went straight down and, um, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, I wasn't looking forward at all, as you can imagine, to seeing what I might see. I had no idea that the buildings would fall. But um, I've witnessed a lot of tragedy around the world, and I wasn't looking forward to that, but it's what I do. I felt like I had to go down and I couldn't look at myself in the mirror if I didn't go and, and photograph that day. And as it turned out, as I was standing, being held back by a barricade of blockade of policemen of just three or four blocks in front of the towers, suddenly the first one fell. And of course, everyone was aghast and we dove into a building to get out from under the debris and these same very sort of burly policemen were really kind of, as you can imagine, emotionally falling apart. I said immediately, we've got to get out of here. The, I run down near the river down there every morning. And I said, uh, let's get to the river where there'll be, will at least be fresh air. They stayed. I left. It was total silence. Um, and on my way to the river, the second building fell right in front of me. And, uh, and then I went in with the first fireman. And as you say, I mean, you've worked all over the world in Iraq, Afghanistan. You were in Tiananmen Square. You documented the genocide in Rwanda. You were almost killed in the war in Chechnya, um, but it was different, wasn't it? Did it feel different? What do you feel like when you look back at those photos now? You know, I, I'm not sure that what did feel different. It, it felt uh, very similar, actually. I, my mind kind of put a lot of things together pretty quickly. My, the first war I ever covered was the uh, siege of Palestinians by the Israelis in West Beirut in 82. Um, 
And not that I can pretend that I knew exactly what had happened, nor do I want what I've wanted to know. But um, but yeah, I felt like I was back in a war zone. And, you know, as, as a war photographer, you do what trauma surgeons do, you do what professional athletes do, you kind of go at the process the way you know how to break it down. And in that particular case, the, the unknown was no one had any idea that these two buildings would fall. Um, by the time the, uh, when, the, when they fell, what was so eerie was just the total silence and then this kind of foot and a half deep of gray snow that was the, 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 the result of all the destruction. I remember standing on the side of the massive destruction, destruction that was like a Bruegel-esque painting. You can't describe it. Um, the photographs sort of depict this. And there was this group of firemen, and one of them turned to me, and he was they were all in shock. And he said, I was supposed to actually have been on duty this morning, but one of my buddies replaced me because I had a divorce hearing, but he was in the building. And most of these firemen had buddies who'd been in the building. And then when we went in about 40 minutes after, because the fire had subsided, it was just a sense of total desperation that there was no one they could find to save. Okay. Well, I want to take a moment now to, to look at some of those images that you took. Really amazing um, moments captured there. There are so many images of that tragic day. I just wondered if you could pick out one that's important to you um, and, and talk to us about it. Yeah, so when the two towers fell and I had reached the Hudson River, which is effectively just to the side of Ground Zero, suddenly this group of firemen emerged, the first firemen I'd seen carrying on a stretcher one of their buddies. And as a photographer, I did what I do, which is I document what I see and what I think maybe is important as a testimony to what has happened. Of course, the first fireman not understanding that, I could tell was very, very upset with my making the photograph. And I, it was one of those moments where as a photojournalist, you understand what he's feeling, but there's no chance to explain yourself. But I never forgot that. And... Interestingly, a year later, and it was an intense year for anyone who had been involved or lived near there. It was, all, it was ever pervasive. I didn't quite know what I would do the night before the first anniversary, and I was sitting at home, and I got a call at about 11 at night, and this gentleman says, are you David Turnley? I said, yes. And he said, do you remember the fireman who really was upset when you made that photograph of us carrying our buddy out? And I said, yeah. I, I certainly do remember you. And he said, I want to apologize. He said, I had no idea at that moment what was happening, what you were doing, why you were doing it. I was in such grief. But um, we've seen your photographs, and it's because of people like you that the world will now bear testimony to what we, what we went through that day and what our buddies went through. And we want you to come down and meet us at the fire station and pray at 6 tomorrow morning on the anniversary, and then we're going to go down to Ground Zero, and then we want to go to a bar together and drink the rest of the day. And We'd like you to join us, and I, that's how I spent the first anniversary of 9-11. I can feel your emotion, um, David. 20 years on, it's still very raw, isn't it? Um, there are worldwide exhibitions, films, books that reflect um, on what happened on that dreadful day. When I was preparing this show and I talked to people about it, some people said to me, oh, we don't want to relive that. Why are you doing a culture show on that? I want to ask you, why is it important to see those images and to look back? You know, I think, I think there's so many things. First of all, I think more than anything, it's just humanity. You know, the people that day who lost their lives were people going to work, um, just doing what good people do. They get up and they go to work. And that's what's so tragic. And the people's lives have been so affected by that day. And, and it's, it, 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 it not only that was a monumental day in, in the history of the world, but 
such a manifestation, obviously, of, of hate that I think it's important for us never to forget and to try to understand how, however we go about that. And I'm not pretending to be the expert on how one does that, but um, I think it's important to, to pay tribute, to pay, to give testimony and, and to create a, a, a platform for all of us to put our heads together and our minds and our hearts together to try to think and try to get past hate. Okay. David Turney, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your experience with us. Your work is on show at the moment in a festival called Vision d'ailleurs. It's Visions from Elsewhere in English, and that's on in Normandy. We're going to leave you now with a taster of some of the films that are coming out to commemorate 9-11, including Spike Lee's documentary series and Worth, which stars Michael Keaton. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. Andy Carr comes up behind me and says, America's under attack. And I'm watching a child read. Many people ask me, what was it like that day? When I was on the pile, when I was part of that effort, you really felt the love of humanity right there. It was, it just lifted you. France by France 24. From the workshop to the catwalk, follow the latest trends on fashion. From fine dining to architecture and much more, discover uniquely French talents on You Are Here. Straight talking and frank views from residents of France's tough suburbs who film their lives for the Bonheur project. An in-depth look at political and social events shaping France in France in Focus. A quirky insider's guide to understanding France and the French on French Connections. Every day, watch France by France 24 on France 24 and France24.com.